All right, so we, we have another version here of, of Vert Athlete, and we're really excited to have uh, Dr. Kerry McDonald on with us. He is the head men's volleyball coach at British Columbia Volleyball, and he also has a PhD in kinesiology specializing in sports medicine. And Kerry, again, thanks for, for being on with us today. So uh, first, Kerry, what I'd like to do is, is you've already kind of garnered a name for yourself um, especially in Canada as being one of the leads is really being on the ground floor of, of quantifying uh, jump load and training load in your sport. Uh, and what I'd like to do is just kind of start off by telling a little bit of the story of, of how you, you initially got it started with your PhD and your interest in, you know, choosing that as your focus. For sure. Uh, yeah, happy to talk about it. Um, basically what really led me down this path was, it was in 2000 and, uh, 2010, actually, I was coaching uh, with another school at the University of Calgary, and we won the national championship that year. And at the end of the year, one thing I was, I really looked back on that season, I said, you know, it, it was such a grind and it was such a struggle. And one of the biggest struggles we were having was just trying to stay healthy. And in subsequent years, uh, the next year we ended up finishing third, and that year was this exact same situation. And, and I thought that you know, it was really a health issue on why we maybe weren't as good the following year. Um, and we just had guys that just couldn't train as much as we wanted to train and, and were missing matches due to chronic overuse injuries, basically. Um, so I kind of wanted to dive into that a little bit further. And I've been thinking about it a little bit more. And I was fortunate enough that at the University of Calgary, there's um, the Sport Injury Prevention Research Center, which is an IOC-funded research center uh, that just looks at sport injury prevention. So I was really fortunate to get connected there with a uh, world-renowned uh, professor uh, in Dr. Wola Maywissa. And uh, yeah, we started kind of going from that. And then I didn't know how to really get into this. And I stumbled across Vert uh -huh. um, from a, another volleyball coach that saw it. At, I think it was a, an ADCA conference uh, around the women's NCAA finals and said, hey, there's this thing that can measure every single time you jump and how high. And, and at first, everyone was kind of really excited about, well, the, cool, we could see how high we jump. We could see how high we jump. And my mind immediately went to, so it counts every time we jump. All right, I need to get some of these. Yeah. So, so the, really other, the other piece I really want to talk to you about, because you've done so much research with, with load in the sport, uh, sp specifically not just looking at performance, but injury prevention, because as we know, if you're injured, you cannot perform, mm -hmm. right? So let's get to the heart of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When it comes to, to women in the sport, we already mm -hmm. know that there's been sort of a standardized average of you know, limiting them, like our U.S. national team does this, to about 125 mm. jumps. You and I have talked mm. about this where on the men's side, it will be as high as, as 300 jumps. And yet, mm -hmm. uh, the injury rate on lower extremity for women mm. is so much higher than men. And I just mm. wanted you to speak a little bit to that in terms of the, the research you've seen and, and sure. what you've done. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what we, what we see between the two genders is with the chronic overuse knee problems uh, that we're starting to capture and get doing a better job of measuring, we actually see the chronic issues to be a little bit higher in men uh, than we do in women. But we see the acute, like the ACL tears and blowouts, that's almost exclusively in women's volleyball. We very rarely see uh, those type of injuries in, in men's volleyball. So there's a little bit of a difference there. But yeah, when it comes to like the understanding the thresholds and the numbers, the way I like to think about it is really around a capacity piece. So the tendon itself has a capacity to withstand um, a certain amount of load. So if we're thinking of like a jumper's knee or patella tendinopathy or quadricep tendinopathy, um, the, those tendons have a capacity for load. And, what we, and they don't respond really well to sudden changes. Um, so they have a capacity and we got to try and, and train within the capacity of the tendon. But what's really cool about our body and, and about tendons in general is that they can increase and decrease their capacities and that can happen. It happens slowly, but we can really do that. So, um, so as far as a threshold goes, what I've kind of found is there isn't a magic number. Um, that works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Each individual is going to have a different capacity. So what we try and do is just develop capacity within our athletes. So I can tell you that we had an athlete this year that probably never jumped more than 160 times um, in a session. And that would be like a five set match for that athlete. Um, and after that would usually have some sort of a flare up in their uh, jumper's knee. And then this summer they were training with our national team all summer, doing two days all summer long. And they were easily doing 300, 350 jumps um, in a day. And yet they would, this summer they didn't have any knee, knee pain. 
for the most part. So what we saw there was that basically he just developed greater capacity this summer and could handle that. And now 350 was fine, whereas last year 160 would, would really cause some problems. So he's developed a greater capacity. So what we try and do now is just work on that. And the biggest issue that I find is really at the start of the season. So when you kick off the yeah. season and when things are getting started, that's when the athlete's going to likely have the lowest capacity if they're coming off of a rest phase. So as coaches, we have to be intelligent to try to slowly build that capacity. And I know we all start with two days. That's pretty common. So uh, we got to be smart with what we do in those two days. Yeah, and, and, and to that point, what we've done is, is we've looked at a lot of our programs here in the States. And, we mm-hmm. said, and what we found was uh, in the spring, for example, uh, we mm-hmm. looked at the trend of jump height and jump count in the spring. And mm-hmm. exactly to your point, what we saw was a lot of these programs where like day one, they're at 150, 160, even though their jump mm-hmm. count would decline, their mm-hmm. average jump, ha- jump height would also decline. Mm-hmm. And then the other mm-hmm. programs where we, we saw very uh, purposefully that build up, mm-hmm. well, guess what? Mm-hmm. By the end of the spring, they're jumping on average an inch and a half to two inches higher than they were at the beginning which is yeah, exactly, exactly what you want. Um, so yeah, yeah. No, I, I wanted to go over that because as, as popular and frankly as powerful as jump count is, uh, because it mm-hmm. does help, it does give that first you know, layer of defense, so to speak, um, mm-hmm. that, that in, in and of itself can be a band-aid. If, if people were to just manage jump count properly in that kind of progression we've discussed, uh, then it becomes yeah. a lot more powerful and you're going to have yeah. less injury and, and, and better performance from your athletes and, and women mm-hmm. being more anatomically prone to those injuries. Uh, just give a little yeah. bit of an overview of, of the terminology. Sure, yeah. Using. Yeah. So just, so when it comes to kind of our, our lower extremity and, and particularly getting at the, at the knee, um, we basically, we see two primary injury types, uh, in our sport of volleyball. So we see our chronic injuries, which is what we kind of classify as jumper's knee. And jumper's knee is kind of this all encompassing kind of classification. And it really gets at anything um, around the knee joint that's that's tendon based, and that's really usually it's almost always patella tendon, uh, which is kind of your kneecap down to your shin, or quadricep tendon from your kneecap up to your quad. Um, so it's usually one of those two, and patella tendon is usually more common than than quadricep tendon. But it's yeah, it's, it's an aggravation of of that tendon, and it's almost like micro tears within the tendon itself that gradually pro- um, develop. Um, and then the body's kind of maladaptation and, and trying to heal itself, and, and we kind of keep loading that tendon and keep stressing that tendon. Trying to heal while, uh, you're while, while yeah, while yeah, exactly. While it's injured, we just kind of keep going at it, and, and we do this for years and years and years, and you know, and then athletes who just take pop an IV pro and some painkillers to just kind of get through it. And, and the crazy part is, you can like you can kind of play through a lot of it, a lot of it, but it's it's really it can become really painful, and and it's a real common reason why a lot of athletes actually um, end up retiring from our sport especially at the professional level is, is they just can't pay, play through that anymore and then the second injury that we see more so as we talked about earlier is, is really more your acute um, ligament um, tears so that's kind of like your ACL tear or MCL tear um, usually more ACL and yeah it, for it's kind of the, the theories is anyways it's really around kind of a knee valgus which is basically the knee moving um, medially or more towards the midline of, of the body when you see the people land and, and their knees try to kiss each other yeah, exactly. So their feet are shoulder width and their knees are touching. Yeah. Um, that's valgus, right? So that, that's, that's not, not a good thing. Yeah, that's not good. And that's put a lot of strain on, on that ACL. And that's for whatever reason, what, and there's kind of some anatomical pieces around way, the way our hips are designed in, and differences between uh, males and females there that makes them, uh, females far more susceptible to ACL tears. Um, and it's usually it's usually a landing type uh, issue as well. It's the way they come down, the way they land with that valgus, and then they end up with the ACL tear. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we don't really see that as much on the men's side, and it's mm-hmm. likely more anatomically uh, reasons why, and some potential strength reasons. There's more information coming out now, looking at kind of hip strength and the effect that the hips can have on trying to maintain that um, that new that neutral knee angle. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of maybe a bit of a summary. Well, the the hips. Now that we'll get more in depth again, but the hips are what allow yeah. you to keep that external rotation of the femur to try to exactly. keep that valgus knee from coming in. And so, to parents and coaches yeah. who are who are watching this, essentially mm-hmm. you have the long term injury, and then you have that quick <clears throat> um, yeah. burst injury, which again could be a result exactly. of bad movement over time, which it usually is. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, in volleyball, we all talk about I want to jump higher, I want to hit harder. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about how you're landing. 
Um, yeah, and, and we'll be doing a absolutely. lot of work with videos, and, and we're going to bring Carrie in on this to go over, you know, what are the things you need to look at. So, you know, mm -hmm. further down the line, keep a look out for that because, look, <laughs> jump is half the battle. Uh, lanes yeah. where these, these injuries tend to happen. So, Carrie, again, thank you absolutely. very much for that overview. To, to end, um, mm -hmm. and this is more for our viewers, uh, Carrie's mm -hmm. working very closely with us on, on the new Vert Team system. So the research we're doing at that, that next level where we are looking and quantifying, because for those of you who don't know, we do have a, a higher end vert team system that can actually look at landing impact. Um, we're doing a lot of work here to see that next step and that next level, because again, jumping's half the battle. And, and as we do more research, obviously we'll come back on and do other videos uh, to, to make sure people are as up to date as, as we all are um, on the research. But again, Carrie, really, really appreciate the time and uh, no problem. look forward to chatting with you again soon. Yeah, thanks so much, David. It's been it's been a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see uh, where where things are going with Vert and with the new units and and all the information we're getting and how we can best utilize it. So it's an exciting time, for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thanks.